Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian McLogan and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to evaluate logarithms. And I'm gonna do that by working through 16 different examples. Now, in the 16 examples that I'm working through, you can see that the base of the logarithm is either gonna be the number two or three. But the argument of the logarithm is some large numbers, some small numbers, and some really small numbers as fractions. So I hope that no matter what logarithm that you're trying to evaluate, after we work through these 16 examples, you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable and confident to be able to do it on your own. Now, before we kind of get into actually the evaluating, let's just do a quick little recap of what is a logarithm, you know, why do we use it and what does it really un represent? So, you know, here is a exponent. Um, basically an exponential equation here that's already evaluated, but it's rather simple to kind of solve. You know, anything that we have y is equal to x to the a here, we can say that is going to be an exponential equation. Now let's pretend we know what x is and we know what a is, and we can say y equals three squared. Now if we wanted to solve for y, that's rather simple, right? y is equal to, y is equal to nine, right? It's, we can evaluate that. Now the logarithm equation is the inverse of the exponential equation. So what we can do is, you know, another question that we may ask is what if I had y is equal to, I'm sorry, Let's write it like this. What if I had nine was equal to three to the x? What if I didn't want to actually solve for y, but what if I was trying to solve for x? Well, how would we do that? Well, that is what the logarithm is basically asking us. We know this is saying three raised to what number is gonna give us nine. And so hopefully you probably understand, You know, obviously we know the answer is two, but the way that we represent that as a logarithm is going to be log base three of nine is going to equal to x. So you can see in this exponential form, let me write this down here, y equals x to the a, right? And so if we were gonna do this in logarithmic form, by rewriting this, this would be log bakes x to the y is equal to a. Okay, so no matter what your variable is, obviously if we want to solve for y, you know, you can have this x to the a, and if we're trying to solve for a, we can use the logarithm result. So this is our exponential form, this is our logarithmic form. But the, really the main idea, the reason why I like to look at this with numbers, is therefore you can understand when I see log base two of eight, what this is really asking us is two raised to what number is equal to eight, right? And in a very fundamental way, you know, we could say, well, two to the first power is just two, two squared is equal to four, and two cubed is two times two times two, so that's going to be equal to eight. So therefore, we can see that the answer is just going to be three, right? Because again, and, and also last, last thing is, if you have this in exponential form, you can always check your answer, or I'm sorry, if you have it in logarithmic form, you can always rewrite it in exponential form. So we can always rewrite this answer in exponential form to make sure it makes sense two to the third power has to equal eight, which we know is a true statement, all right? So let's go ahead and work on you know question number um, two here. So three raised to what power is equal to one? Now this is a property of logarithms, and maybe if you understand that property, you would know exactly what the answer is. Um, but let's kind of just look at it in terms of, um, you know, just another way to kind of make sense of it. Again, this is basically asking us, you know, three raised to what number is gonna equal one? Now again, we know three to the one power is equal to three. Three squared is equal to nine, right? Three cubed is equal to 27. So obviously, going down, you know, getting to larger and larger numbers is not where we wanna go. Let's go into smaller, like three to the zero. Now the important thing is, if you think about it, from going from three to nine, you multiply by three. To go from nine to three, you multiply by three. So if I wanted to go backwards, you could really think of that as dividing by three, right? 27 divided by three is nine. Nine divided by three is going to give you three. And if I did three divided by three, you can see that that answer is one. Or you can also just recognize that the property that three, any, any number or term raised to the zero power is going to equal one. And that's exactly what this value is this value is zero because three to the zero power is equal to one. And there's just hopefully a way of, in terms of exponents for us to kind of understand why that works. And I will continue with that when we get into our fractional powers, which is coming up. Um, so next one is three raised to what number is 27? So hopefully I just kind of already did that. So you can see that that answer is three. Again, log base three of 27, three, immediately I just think to myself, you know, three raised to what number equals 27? 
right? And that's how I use, you know, when I'm looking at a logarithm, I usually look at it in this exponential form, so therefore I could be able to evaluate it because my brain obviously easily computes exponents. Logarithms, still I can get, you know, kind of confused or get things switched up. All right, now there's a couple different ways to think about the, the fractional form. Um, and typically when we're dealing with logarithms, you know, dealing with fractions is not really going to be preferred. Um, so what we can do is I can rewrite this problem as log base two of four to the negative first power. Okay, so one way to think about this is log base two of four to the first power. And so therefore, I'm asking myself two raised to what number is equal to four to the negative first power. Now, if you remember, uh, or maybe if you've covered it in this case, we can apply the one-to-one -one property, right? And that's what's kind of helpful, at least in this one, one-to-one, -to, -one, to understand this. And the one-to-one -one property basically, you know, can be summed up as this. If I had like three to the x equals three to the fifth, well then what does x have to be? Right? Well, obviously x has to equal five. So as long as you have the bases exactly the same, you know that their powers are going to be equal to each other in an equation. So in this case, the bases are not the same. However, could I write four as a base two? Of course I could, right? I could rewrite this as two to the x is equal to two squared to the negative first power. Now I'm gonna to need to kind of continue this argument over here because I'm kind of ran out of space. But therefore, remember the rules of exponents is that when you have a, an exponent raised to another power, you multiply the powers. So therefore, I have two to the x is equal to two to the negative second. Now you can see that x is gonna equal negative two. And so therefore, two raised to what power equals one fourth? That answer is negative two. So I kind of, hmm. Crap. Um, let's see here, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this over. So that's equal to negative two. Therefore, you can see where that came from. Um, you know, and I'll actually use the, I'll do that one eighth. I'll do that for the next one. I'll just do, instead of doing that, I'll do it a different way. Uh, all right, this one hopefully can be done rather quickly. Two raised to what number is equal to two? Well, obviously, hopefully you understand that that's going to be the identity element one. Um, the next one, two raised to what power is equal to 16? So, you know, I know two raised squared is four, two raised to the third power is eight. If you multiply that by two one more time, you can see that's going to be 16. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the eight. Now, hopefully we recognize that, you know, log base two to the eight is gonna equal three. So I'm assuming this is probably going to be dealing somewhere close to three. And hopefully maybe you can even recognize that when we have this fraction, um, just by putting that as a negative power, the answer should be negative three. But real quick, let's use our idea again of the exponents to really kind of make sense of us using um, the, just the powers. So again, if we have like two to the zero, we recognize as one. Two to the one is equal to two. You know, two cubed, we recognize as, what about two squared? <laughs> two squared is four. Two cubed is gonna be equal eight. Now obviously, if going under that understanding of like the dividing, right? So to go from here to here, you multiply by two, multiply by two, multiply by two. So if you divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. That means if I go to two to the negative first power, that should equal one half. Two to the neg negative second power should equal one fourth. And again, be very careful, like the, um, when you take one half and you divide it by two, that's gonna equal one fourth. Um, but we should also know that as well, like two to the negative second power, like we know that's gonna be one over two squared, which equals one over one fourth. So therefore two to the negative third power is equal to a positive or positive one over eight. And the reason I wanted to make sure positive because a lot of students will see these negative exponents and they'll get that confused with the um, actually the the value being negative. And it's not, that just means you're using the reciprocal of that um, base. So two to the one eighth is just going to be negative three. So you can use it based on this kind of understanding or you could use the one to one property and negative powers understanding. So really in this case now I've kind of trained my brain, okay, a fraction, so I'm just gonna rewrite this as log base two of 32 to the negative first power. 
actually one more way. We could use the rules of exponents, right? Let's do it this way. So if you remember the rules of exponents, and I'm not sure where, where you are in this one, you could bring this negative one down in front, right? So really, what is the log base two of 32? Well, what number raised to the, you know, two raised to what number equals 32? Well, that's if two to the raised to the fourth power 16, that means two raised to the fifth power is going to be 32. And therefore you see that's going to be a negative five. So we can use that another rule of exponents to understand that. Um, let's see here. Three raised to what number equals 81? Well, three cubed is, three squared is nine, three cubed is 27, three to the fourth power is 81. Now, recognize also, guys, that these are all dealing, I'm able to do all of these with, um, in my head. Obviously, if you did not have multiples of them, we'd be looking into alternative ways to evaluate them. Um, for So this is just some basic ones to really understand this. This one here, I'm gonna kind of use this result here. Two, we know that two to the 32nd is five. So if I multiply that two one more time, like 32 times two is 64. So therefore I can say that this answer is just going to be six, right? Um, I already know this answer is five from the other one. Three, that has to be one, right? That's the identity. That one's rather easy, that one's four. Two raised to what is my six one over 16th? So I know that two raised to the fourth power is 16, but since that's a reciprocal, that's going to be negative four. Um, three raised to the Fourth power is 81, so then since that's a fraction, it's going to be um, negative four. And three raised to the second power is gonna equal nine. So hopefully, kind of working through at least those first nine examples, you can kind of see how I've broken up or explained each and one of these. And therefore, you can kind of see at least my understanding and the basis from there. And then you can kind of see through all these examples what exactly you do. So hopefully that helped, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Cheers.